Welcome to the presentation of the MBS FileMaker plugin. My name is Christian Schmitz. I'm from Germany and I'm trying to speak English as good as I can. The MBS plugin has been around for 12 years. We have over 5,000 functions, probably something for everyone. Whatever was needed in the last 12 years has been added. So I hope you enjoy the plugin. And today I don't want to tell you everything. I just picked the things we added in the last year, so you get an overview of what's going on. We start with the version 7.5 from last November, and there we got commands to run command line utilities. So you can launch a command line utility, you can pass input, you can get the output, both from the error and the normal output channel, you can get triggers for your scripts to be noticed when there is new data coming or if the tool is terminating. You can kill the tool and we have used this with FFmpeg to transcode videos, to run Python scripts, to run the FileMaker admin tool on the command line, to ping the server or to just zip a folder in the background. And that's a key thing here. The whole process can run in the background so you launch a project, uh, launch a utility, then you can do other things in FileMaker, export data, import data, whatever, and whatever dialog will show will not stop the tool from running, so it can run in the background and you can then pick up the results in a script. For the Mac users, we have some nice enhancements to the FileMaker application itself, and this includes showing the IDs for layouts, because the name changes often, the ID never. So you may find this useful. And then we have regular expressions. And we added here the search and replace. So you cannot just compile a pattern and apply it to the text several times to get individual pieces um, captured. But you can also search for a certain pattern and then replace it with a pattern and reuse the parts you found. So like look for text separated with a separator and then another text and then output them in the other order, for example. As you may know, we have a lot of PDF functions and we added last year the feature to replace an existing image in a PDF document. This was for companies selling houses, and they had a template PDF with some placeholder pictures, and there we put in the pictures of the houses on sale for this week, so they could get well, the pictures added easily. And there were a few more little features, like you can get a trial license. If you use our functions to work on Word files, we can append to a word file so you can output a thousand letters in one word file. We got JavaScript and co-locations functions not just for Mac but ported them to iOS. So you can run JavaScript without a web viewer as well as getting the location of your iOS or Mac device. Then we have SFTP functions with our curl imp implementation which got upgraded to work on FileMaker Cloud so you can transfer files securely from one FileMaker cloud server to another. Our <coughs> OCR functions to um, detect text on a picture have been upgraded to get a number only mode. So if you know that on a certain invoice there's a number, you can just tell it detect a number so you don't get any O's or I's in your number. And for our JSON functions, we got uh, newer code to handle long numbers correctly, so we don't convert them to scientific notation in between. <coughs> then we got version 8 in January, and for our Mac users, we got a little enhancement for the calculation dialog and for the custom functions. We can just type Command F to open the Find panel and search and replace text in your calculations or custom functions. For iOS, we got a few upgrades, so you can use the PDF kit functions to work on PDF documents on the iOS device. 
Also the AV export functions can be used to convert videos. The CG image source can be used to read over 20 image formats and get thumbnails as well as the metadata. The clipboard functions can read the clipboard and put content on the clipboard in various formats. And the events functions can read and write the, your calendar database or your reminder database on the iOS device. And all those functions are also working on Mac. Oh. Okay, in, in Switzerland, there's a new standard for putting a QR code on the invoices. So people can easily pay the invoice by just scanning the code and confirming with the bank. And if you ever need this, you can use the plugin. And we got a few more features, but you can use the Spotlight <coughs> search engine, well, without the Spotlight window, but you can use the same engine to find files on your computer for Mac and iOS. We can use domains with Asian characters or umlauts with curl on Windows. Our functions to read and write Excel for documents without having Microsoft Excel got an upgrade to not just read and write cells and formats and fonts but you can also batch white cells so if you have a list with a thousand values you can put them in an excel document with just one line and one call to the plugin then we got a function to import csv and this allows you to pass in the name of the file the name of the table the list of the fields you want to use and then the plugin will detect in your text what is the delimiter. Is it a comma, a semicolon, a tab? And then we will create the records for you by running SQL commands under the hood. Then we got the JavaScript message handler. That's a way to call back from a web viewer on FileMaker 16 or on iOS to call back from JavaScript to a script in FileMaker. So you can have a web viewer where you click a button and this triggers a scripted FileMaker for Mac and iOS with FileMaker 16 in Europe. And our LDAP function have been upgraded to uh, use JSON for passing parameters. So if you want to create uh, a user on your LDAP or Active Directory server, you can do that with a block of JSON. As well as when you query the values, you can get back a block of JSON. Some people you still use Elder for logins to FileMaker and they can manage the logins from FileMaker and then synchronize the data to the Elder server to do the login. Then we got the version 8.1 in March. And here we got drag and drop for Windows. So we had it for Mac before, but now for Windows we added uh, new function so you can define a drop area where the user can drop one or more files from the Explorer directly or from an application like Outlook. The FileMaker container can accept one file from the Explorer and can't accept files from Outlook because the Outlook files are coming on demand. So when the plugin accepts the files it will ask Outlook for the data and can give it to you as a container and you can put it in a container field. And the whole thing works with a script trigger. So whenever something is dro dropped, you get a script trigger, you can ask the list of files, can decide which files you like, which files you don't like, and do whatever action you like. <coughs> then we got a function to create a custom web viewer with a plugin on Mac and iOS on the layout. This web viewer does not reload when you switch layouts or switch records. It stays on the layout until you close it or remove it. And you can use it to print PDFs to, no, to print websites to PDF, as well as to do all the other web view functions we have in the plugin. And you can even put it on a pop over control. <coughs> And we got more, like XML validation. So if you have to upload an XML to a maybe web service and you got a schema definition, you can validate whether your XML is valid for the schema. We got improvements to our PHP implementation. 
So if you need to run PHP code, you now get better error handling and you can use more of the PHP extensions. We also got code to load Java and the plugin is very universal as it can load Java from very old version 1.4 to the latest version and for Java of version 9 and newer we had to change our code a little bit so now you can use any Java version you find and load a class and run a few methods. <coughs> Then for using Amazon S3 and other Amazon Web Services, we got a function to sign a call. So with a curl transfer, you have to do some authentication with, with Amazon. And we got a function to do this for you. So you just pass in your credentials and what you action you want to do, and we will sign your request. And if you use one of those MacBooks with a touch bar, we got a little help for you because if you are typing a custom function and you hit the escape key by accident, all your edits are gone. So with the plugin you can switch to use option escape instead of just escape to prevent you from accidentally losing your formulas. And then we got the version in May. You notice it's working like a clockwork every two months a new release. So, and 8.2 is for FileMaker 17. We had some last minute changes in, in spring, so please use the latest versions to not run into any bugs we fixed already. We got functions for HealthKit on iOS. So if you want, you can check for availability. You can authorize with the user, so you can read the health database, you can get the basic information as well as running queries on the health database to get data like your weight or your steps into your FileMaker database. Then we also got store kit for Mac and iOS. So you can query the products you defined in the App Store. You can let the user start a purchase. You can list the products he bought already and you can show a nice dialog with the details on a product and if you want you can even ask the user to rate your application. Then we implemented the search in a FileMaker list. So whenever FileMaker shows a list in the user interface, you can click on the list, press command F and search through the entries in the list. This works with over 30 lists in the user interface, so whatever you want to search, your list of fields, your list of layouts, your list of privilege sets, you can enjoy the search. Well, this is only for Mac. Yeah. Then we got a loop function. So in a FileMaker script, I often write code to, to make a loop. There's always the same six, seven lines in the script, and well, it's just often a loop for just one line, <laughs> calling a plugin function. So instead we got this loop function to count up a variable from a start value to an end value with a given step. It can count backwards <coughs> if you need, and it will run the given formula as many times as you request. And there's even another parameter for an exit condition, so you can exit early if something is going wrong. So if you ever need to run a plugin function 20 times or to build a list of something by calling a FileMaker function, you can do that here. And there are dialogues in FileMaker which have um, column widths, which well, you may want to change. Like if you have layouts with long names, you may want to resize the, the column to show you the full name of your layouts or your fields. And the MBS plugin will remember your column width. So when you open the dialog again, you will get the same column width and see the full names of your layouts. A little thing, but can be useful. Is that what it's a custom function? I have to look up which dialogs it works or not. And if it's missing, I could probably add it. Next one. 
We often work with web services, with JSON and XML, and the plugin got a function to colorize them so you can better show them to the user. Or to me as a developer, because I have to read that more often than you. <laughs> and while we added, we also added a function to make HTML from the JSON, so we can show the HTML in a web viewer to help on debugging what's coming back from the web service. Or what we are sending to the web service, of course. And we got a few more functions. Our rich text functions for working on RTF files have been upgraded for iOS. FileMaker introduced UIDs as numbers with FileMaker 17. So I quickly made the same functions for older FileMaker versions, as well as the function to convert between the number and the UID as text. We got a function to create statistics on a table. So you can know how many containers you have, how many bytes they use in a table, how many text fields you have, how many, much text is in a table, so you can get an idea about the size of the table. Then in this release we added 50 new curl options. You may know curl has over 200 options and I just completed the <coughs> list to make get them all into my plugin. So if you need anything for authentication, for proxies, for FTP options, we have it. And we added a site license, so if you have a big corporation and you don't want to count how many seats, how many servers, we can get you one license key for everything. And our clipboard functions have been upgraded to convert automatically between style text and HTML. So on your Mac, if you go to a browser and you copy some text from a website, the browser may decide to put in style text on the clipboard or HTML or both. And whatever you need on the other side, we can convert from one to the other version. And then we got the release for DEF CON in July. And there we got line numbers for our text output. So whatever text you have, you can just add line numbers and you get, can format those line numbers, whatever style you want. So in this example, we just took the output of the JSON formatting and put it into the line number functions to add the line numbers. And this is very convenient if you have to tell your colleague that line 200 has a bug in the XML, and then you can easily spot where's line 200. And for Mega Windows, we got the color panels. So if you have to pick a color, you can use the operation system dialogs. On Windows, it's a dialog. And the screenshots are in German, sorry. But it, it's localized to whatever language your user has. And you can pick a color and then return. And on Mac, it's a palette. So you get a script trigger when there's a new color chosen. And you can pick up which color it is. We have image picker functions for iOS. So you can tell the user to take a picture. And we got an overlay picture, so you can give some instruction to the user, like take a picture where the head is within the rectangle. You can turn the flash on and off and decide which camera to use on iOS, which can be very handy. <coughs> and if you lock down your menus and you made custom menus to block the people to call the delete command directly, and you remove the button from the toolbar, Maybe by using our plugin functions to configure the toolbar buttons at runtime, so you can switch the toolbar buttons on layout switches. But still, there's a context menu on the toolbar, so the user may go into the customized toolbar command and just put back the delete button on the toolbar. And to prevent this, we have a function to control this context menu and remove the entries you don't like. You can even have the menu removed completely. <coughs> Next we got import from camera on Mac. That's a feature where you can connect, well you can just import pictures from your iPhone and get the picture and the metadata. But also you can just take a Canon or Nikon camera, put it somewhere and put a USB cable on your Mac and then you can shoot a photo from the Mac by running a script, download the picture, 
put it on a database and delete it on the device. So you can automatically shoot pictures and download them. And we got a few more features. Uh, Graphics Magic can run in 16-bit mode. So if you have high, high resolution, no, HDR pictures, you can, well, load them and see maybe your X-ray scan in lighter or darker mode and see where you can <coughs> see more of the bones. Then we got open authentication function for curl. So we can again sign a request for you for a web service. And we got an example for use of Twitter service. <coughs> so you can tweet automatically from FileMaker or just implement any other web service using open authentication. Then we got a support for the Blue Term probe for iOS. That's a, um, a probe to measure the temperature of, um, of some liquid or whatever you put it in. And it transfers the temperature via Bluetooth to your iOS device. Then we got a fix for the error server busy dialog on Windows, which can happen <coughs> if the com communication is not working well. And the plugin will simply install a callback to tell Windows to come back later. Because if the dialog shows up, FileMaker is usually blocked, you can't do anything and you can just force quit it. And we got improved file dialogs for Windows. So we have the file dialogs for Mac and Windows and on Windows we upgraded the API for Microsoft to get the newer dialogs for, file, for Windows 7 and newer. And then we came to the release 8.4. And there, for our video recording functions, which work on Mac and Windows, we can now pick the screen as the input on Mac and iOS. So you can do screen recordings, and you can pick which rect angle to use or which screen to pick. Mm -hmm. On the Mac, we can also on Mac and iOS, we can also do QR code scanning live from the camera. So you hold a QR code in front of the camera, and we will trigger a script when we find a QR code. For Windows, we got an upgrade to get higher video resolution, which is also useful if you have an HD camera and you don't want to go with the default resolution, mm -hmm. but use the highest available on the device. Then we got Bonjour functions. So Bonjour is a technology <coughs> Apple uses to find devices on a network. It's also implemented for Windows and Linux. Uh, I think the standard is ZeroConf. So you can find services on the network and FileMaker uses this to find its servers. But you can also advertise your own service to find all the computers on the network where your solution is running. For every computer found, you get all the IP addresses and the port numbers so you can connect directly to service. We have a lot of functions for the address book on Mac and iOS, and also now the context framework. The context framework is a newer one from Apple, which handles several accounts better, and you can get the unified contact information. So if you have a contact which is both local and in Exchange or <coughs> iCloud, you get the merged information. But we keep the older address book functions because for synchronization it may be useful to know the modification date of a contact and that's only provided via the address book frameworks. So we need both for a perfect world. <coughs> then we got quick look functions for Mac and iOS, which can be very handy to show a preview of various file formats, including all those nice 3D or augmented reality files. So if you got one of those, you can show the panel with a, like on iOS, you can show it and then you can walk around this guitar on the screen. We got also keychain functions for Mac and iOS. The keychain is a central database for storing passwords. So you can pre-fill passwords for your FileMaker databases. You can list which accounts have a password in the keychain and of course delete and update the passwords. So in a perfect world, you would have a database which has several, um, you have several files in your database and all use passwords. 
and then when starting the first file you can put all the passwords for the other files in the database for the keychain so the user is not asked for the password again and we got a few more functions so I added uh, the XL, XLST library for the XML functions so you can apply a style sheet to an XML and maybe get an HTML as output. Our checks for declared variables in your scripts have been updated to recognize variables defined with the insert script steps. So if you mistype a variable name in your script you can get an alert but um, you don't get an alert now for the insert script steps as we now recognize them as a variable definition. We got some improvements for macros Mojave, so the script search still works. And you can create or resolve alias files on Mac and link files on Windows. So if you need to place a, an alias or a link on the desktop of the user computer, you can do that in a script now. Also we have a function to calculate the width of a text block as well as the height of the text block. So if you want to know if the text in a field actually fits on the on the field on the layout, you can now check that and maybe reduce the text to till it fits. Especially with uh, name fields, we have the problem that some people have really long last names. So we got a client with a custom function to just reduce a name until it fits, and then FileMaker doesn't show. Um, Instead of showing just the first name, it shows the first name and a part of the last name. We got a website. You can visit the website, you can watch a few videos, you can read new stuff in the blog, and there's a mailing list for announcements and discussions. And for the conference, we got a 20% uh, discount for all the licenses. <coughs> with the coupon code FMK2018. That's FileMaker Conference <coughs> in German. <laughs> um, so if you need a license, you can use this coupon code. Any questions? Impressive. How many people are you in your organization? Your company? Uh, well, uh, I have a wife. I have three kids. <laughs> <laughs> and lots of spare time for work. Yeah. But uh, we are working to, to grow the company and I'm happy that my uh, sister-in-law just finished her Bachelor of Science for Informatics, so I hope she can help me a little bit. Well, I have a question that's very basic, so if anyone has a smarter question than me, they can ask it, but it's a very basic question. So if someone has something else to ask, because I know nothing about MBS, I've never used it, um, I don't use plugins because I've tried 360 working and kept crashing, crashing the machine. So is MBS monkey that's a, a, a plugin of fun custom functions is that correct well then please download the plugin please try it <laughs> thank you